So let's get, just go ahead and get right into it with here, you know, Pro Football Focus, what we see in your game, both in, in the last two years, is how well you are in coverage. And I think that transition from safety to linebacker is a big part of that. Can you talk to me about that transition and what went into that move from safety to linebacker? Well, I think if you want to talk about the transition, I kind of got to take you back to the beginning. I was a baseball player at first, and I was quite honestly a better baseball player than I was a football <laughs> player, but I, I was a center fielder. Mm -hmm. And so kind of going into my senior year of high school, I wasn't planning on playing football in college. Mm -hmm. I was planning on playing baseball. And I just had this like knack and like this desire. I was like, I can't let the game of, of football go. So I kind of came on the recruiting scene late. And so schools were like, well, you know, what are we going to recruit you at? I kind of played every position in high school. And to be quite honest, I was more of an offensive player. Like mm -hmm. I had 35 touchdowns my senior year. Like defense was kind of where if I needed to take a break during the game, like, <laughs> you know, I might take a little break. But so I came in as an athlete and they were like, you know, center field, all right, we'll stick you at safety and just see, you know, how you move around. And I stayed there for three years. But I think we as a team and myself knew my most natural position was linebacker, and it was just a matter of time before we can move me down. Um, and you know, playing Rover last year, and, and then Will this year, and uh, that's kind of been the evolution, I guess, of how I got there. Mm -hmm. And how hard was it to give up baseball? I'm sure that must have been difficult. Well, it's hard. I've played I played baseball since I was three, and, and football since I was five. So <laughs> it's always it's been a big part of me, and I certainly I certainly miss it. But I mean, to trade it for something like Notre Dame and getting to play at this university, it's it's made it worth it, that's for sure. You know, they obviously, you came as an athlete, quickly moved to safety. How excited were you to kind of start really prioritizing playing on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, I wish I could play every play, but on the other hand, I was like, I really get to hone my craft and, and focus on this. And it was a lot to take in, like learning like a defense. Like we lit, we played like red, blue, black. Like that, that was our defensive <laughs> calls like in high school. And so it was actually really cool to actually start learning the intricacies of the game. For sure, and you know, you must sound like you were a nightmare on scout team. If you're this athlete coming out of high school, did you get a lot of scout team earlier in your career and play running back, that wildcat at all? No, I wish. <laughs> I uh, so I came in as a freshman and I was like starting on all our third down packages, and so mm -hmm. and I was kind of like our backup, like safety, and so I didn't get a ton of time on the scout team. I had like a couple practices, but um, for the most part, I was you know learning from the older guys and, and playing where I was plugged. Going from safety to linebacker, you obviously had to add a lot of weight, and even now, you know, there are some concerns. People want you to add more weight. They want to add more beef to your frame. What's your ideal playing weight? Where do you like to play, and where do you see teams wanting you to play at? I think people still have like this conception of like, well, you know, we want our guys to be you know, 45, 50, 55, but I mean, if you talk to NFL coaches, like their guys are playing, some guys this year playing in the playoffs were playing at like, I talked to one coach, he's like, yeah, our guy played at 212. I was like, <laughs> stop it. Like, wow. Like 220, like 218. And so it's like, you know, for me, I've always felt comfortable playing between 230, 235. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that's been kind of the weight I've played at. And I felt comfortable taking on guys and, and still being able to play in coverage. And so that's kind of, that's kind of the, the sweet spot for me right now. Coverage is something that we spoke to earlier, but you're really good at. And I think mm. that's something that when you go to the next level, teams are going to want to use. Do you see yourself kind of being a coverage line, a coverage first linebacker in the NFL? Well, I think, I wouldn't say a coverage first linebacker, but it's certainly in my toolbox. And you look at guys like Alvin Kamara and, and Christian McCaffrey and, you know, Gronkowski and all these athletic tight, tight ends and Ertz and, and all these guys pass catching threats, Travis Kelsey, like you have to have a linebacker that can match up on a tight end, match up on a running back, sometimes even match up on a slot receiver if they need, uh, if they put them in the boundary or whatever it might be. It's just the way the league has gone. It's what the fans want to see. It's what, you know, offenses are gearing towards. And so mm -hmm. uh, you have to have linebackers that can run and cover. Your teams are just going to be able to pick you apart. That's for sure. Is Drew Tranquil ready to cover the Gronkowskis and the Zach Ertz of the world in man coverage and stick to these big athletic guys? Well, I certainly look forward to the challenge <laughs> and I, I can't wait to get, you know, next to those guys. I've had, you know, the, the task of covering some, some top notch guys here over the past past few years and, and certainly those guys are at the top of the game and if you want to be the best you got to go against the best man so I'm certainly looking forward to that challenge and, and certainly can't wait up to match up against those guys on Sunday. Talking with NFL teams at the Combine what did they bring up as, as something they want you to improve on where they want to see you get better at before going to the next level? Well I think you know my first year being in the box they wanted you know they want to see okay can this guy get off block can this guy shed blocks um, and you know 
it was something, you know, halfway through the year, I ended up, I ended up breaking my hand. So I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, how I can be slippery enough, how I can, you know, disengage blockers and be effective in, in block destruction. And so I think that's the biggest question mark, you know, teams are like asking me is like, do you feel comfortable getting off blocks? And I'm like, heck yeah, man. Like I, I benched 31 reps at, at the combine. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's something I feel confident in. And it's somewhere I feel like I have a lot of development yet to go in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, how do I coil my hips effectively? How do I use my lower half to really add to that upper punch that I have? And, uh, you know, I certainly think there's a lot of talented coaches that can certainly take me there at the next level. What are you doing now to kind of work on those critiques and get better at that? Is it the weight room? Is it the film room? Where are you, you know, looking to improve right now and, and try and get better? You know, I see those nuances of, you know, me trying to stick on people using my upper body a little bit too much. I see that on the film. And so really it's taking it to a functional assessment and taking it to the field, taking it to the weight room and doing exercises that allow you, you know, to incorporate your lower body with your upper half um, and, and really coordinating those two things together. Mm -hmm. I want to talk more about film study, talking with pass rushers, running backs, talking to a lot of different players in this pre-draft process. Bringing up film study is so important. I think for linebacker, it has to be even more so important. Play recognition comes into play, recognizing blocks, shedding blocks, and, and knowing where the play is going is, is very important. It's such a reactionary position. Talk to mm -hmm. me about, in a, in a given game week, how much film you're studying. I was talking to my buddy this about this the other day. I think there's really two things that go into it. One, it's your, you know, your athleticism and your skill, like the traits that you forge on a day-to-day -day basis. And then two, it's the pre-snap picture. How much can you consume before a play? And I think film goes into that pre-snap picture. So are you situationally aware? Do you know the down and distance? Do you know the offensive tendencies based on down and distance? Are you formationally aware? Do you know their formational tendencies, what they're trying to do out of X formation? Maybe the back's offset, maybe the back's in the pistol. How does that skew run pass? Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe it's personnel. Um, all of these things play into a pre-snap picture that, you know, some linebackers like Luke Keekley, like that's what makes him have great instincts and great play recognition. Like he knows the play before it happens. Like guys that can get a great pre-snap picture, they oftentimes look more athletic on film just because they've been able to consume a lot more. And so, you know, for me, that all goes into the film study leading into the week of the game. And, you know, for me, it's, you know, self-evaluation on Sunday, personnel on Monday, base downs on Tuesday, third down Wednesday, you know, goal line, short yardage, unique stuff on Thursday and Friday's fine tuning heading into Saturday. Um, but it, it really is a complete package. And you certainly look for tendencies of, what different players are doing, you know, what they're doing, you know, on third and short, third and medium. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into it, but really honing that pre-snap picture will really help you on a game day. It sounds like a lot. That mental aspect of it is fantastic to hear about, kind of get an inside look at. And I'm sure that mental aspect of your game helped you become a captain here at Notre Dame. Talk to me about you being added to that, you know, which is really a laundry list of great players that come from Notre Dame, being a captain. How was that responsibility for you and, and how much did you really enjoy, you know, having that honor here at Notre Dame? Well, you say honor, it was it was one of the biggest honors of my life outside of, you know, marrying my now wife Jackie and expecting our now son. Um, it was, you know, to be recognized by my teammates and coaches to say, hey, you know, we want you to drive this ship. Um, was something I didn't take lightly and certainly learned a lot from and uh, you know something I'll carry with me for the rest of my life and you know if if I can hope for anything I hope that I empowered you know the next generation of leaders because this place is going to go on without me and <laughs> I hope they go and do bigger and better things and you know I hope I was able to play a part in that. Alongside you on film, you constantly see Tevon Coney, a guy yeah. that you kind of look like a dynamic duo at Notre Dame, two off-ball linebackers that played very well. Talk to me about your relationship with him and, and how you two have fed off each other through this pre-draft process. Well, Tevon's awesome, and he was a guy I actually learned a lot from this year just in the nuances of playing linebacker. He played my position last year. Primarily, he kind of cross-trained and played both, but, um, I'll, you know, Tavon, how do I take on this block? Or, you know, we're in, kind of in a dilemma here. You know, we have to cover this gap, but we've also, you know, got two vertical over here to the boundary. Like, kind of what were you looking for? What was your progression there? He was a guy that really helped me out early in the process last spring with that. Um, and I certainly think we complemented each other in, in terms of how we play and our playing styles. Um, and, uh, you know, we're able to help our, our team ultimately this year in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, I played a little Mike in this scheme and, you know, he, he went back to Buck or maybe, you know, I played Buck, he played Mike based on the scheme. And so we were able to do a lot of different things and, and, and complemented one another well. 
Excellent. And, and getting to that next level, you're, a lot of people want to call you different things. The media often tags you as what they want to tag you. You're an athletic coverage linebacker, you're captain at Notre Dame. You know, they give you the superlatives for you. I want to hear from you what you think you are, what kind of player you are in the NFL you know, going from Notre Dame now to the next level. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, be- I truly believe I'm the most complete football player in this class. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that can do a lot of things well. Um, but if you look at my time here at Notre Dame, I'm a guy who's played three positions under three different defensive coordinators. Um, I've played special teams every single year here, um, even this year as a, as a fifth year senior captain, um, playing on both coverage units. And so I'm a guy that just loves the game of football. I think I have a rare competitive toughness that drives me. I think you see that in the way, you know, we're four and eight in 2016 and, you know, me and some guys get elected captains and decide, you know, this isn't the culture we're trying to build. And, you know, in 2018, we're in the college football semifinal game competing for, for an opportunity to play for a championship. And so, you know, I think I, I bring a rare sense of competitive toughness and leadership to a locker room that you're not going to find in another guy in this class. Um, and, you know, I think those are gifts that were, you know, given to me from the Lord and I'm certainly grateful for and I, I'm certainly believe I can use um, as tools to help accelerate any culture and any program at the next level. That's great to hear, man. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you in yeah. the NFL and, and this process moving forward. This has been yeah. very Thanks, great. Thank you yeah, so much. Absolutely. Have a good one.